Hey MJ friends, back to home base for now. So let's get into some USMJ stocks. Did the Canadian video a couple days ago, bunch of information in there, but we're gonna look at the US side of things as we have the banking bill passing hurdle number one. Banking bill hurdle number two will be the house, which it has a whole bunch of co-sponsors. So odds of passing the house fairly in favor of the bulls. And after that, the real challenge with the Senate will begin, but we can look at this to be anywhere months down the line. So this isn't an immediate fix, but again, why this is so big is because businesses will be able to work with banks. We'll be able to see bigger money get involved with these stocks. We see what happens when they get uplisted. VFF as a prime example, Cron, all these names that have uplisted, big money has come in and seen a blue sky breakout run on the vast majority of these names. So that's something we're looking for because it will open the door for big money to get into these USMJ names. So keeping an eye on them, there's a whole bunch that we're going to be looking at here. And earnings season is coming up for the MJ space. This is from the Marijuana Stock Trader Facebook group, MST. It's a bit outdated, so you want to double check the exact dates here. But just looking at April, we can see that we have a whole bunch of companies that are going to be reporting. So if a name that you are interested is on this list, check it out. Double check when that actual report day is, because again, this is from a couple months ago but just to get a sense of what is coming, a lot of earnings. So far in the Canadian MJ space, we've seen disappointing reactions from TRST and Cron. The question now is, what are the reactions on the US side of things going to be? And I'm gonna be watching IAN and TRUL very close early April this coming week, because that's gonna give us some good insight. GTII, KSHB. So a lot of US MJ names are going to be in this next round of earnings that we're watching. So we'll start it off. The way that I organize these names are from stronger setups with proximity to blue sky breakout, and then on down the line to weaker setups. But the ones in the second half of the video here are going to be worth watching because entry on consolidation many times is much better than entry into breakouts. So I entered TRUL just as an example on consolidation back last week. Where are we on TRUL? There we are. So just entered on the consolidation looking for the daily higher low. And that allows me comfortability to manage my position as I'm in the green right now. It depends on what the earnings reaction is going to be. But managing a position when you're in the green is way easier than when you're in the red in terms of keeping on offense is what I like to say rather than being, you know, beaten up by the bears and pushed back and in the red and wondering what you should be doing. It's much easier to be making decisions if you are in the green on that trade from the get-go. So we're going to start off with OH because OH has been in a blue sky run. And at this point, we've gone very significantly higher from 872. And a few weeks later, here we are up 50% higher, a little bit lower than 50%, but a significant bull move with volume and just a steady, consistent new all-time high breakout, pretty much two out of the last three days, four out of the last six days bottom line is the bulls are very strong look at the increasing bull volume on this continuation move cup and handle pattern breaking out and no sign of consolidation just yet so we know that when we lose the daily uptrend that's the indication that our weekly consolidation to form a higher low is going to be coming and anything above 1066 keeps the uptrend intact the hourly time frame Bulls are attempting a bull flag at the end of the day on Friday. Anything above 1125 keeps the hourly uptrend intact. So the bulls are comfortable on all time frames. Hold the hourly uptrend and we're going to be looking for 1230, 1250, and 13 psychological resistances as the next targets. If we lose the hourly uptrend, that's when we zoom out to the daily and we watch that key daily level of 1066 that we just highlighted. So hourly uptrend is the first thing to be watching when it's lost, zoom out to the daily and we see if the bulls can maintain the daily uptrend. C-Web is coming off of all-time highs as well. This past week, we had the all-time high of 2775 and then we double topped to the penny at that level on Friday. So first thing, we were unable to break to new higher highs. We pulled back very significantly and the bulls were there to buy the dip, but it's giving us an equilibrium setup where we have the high of the day, low of the day, our lower high was set at 2705. And if we start Monday with an inability to break 2705 and consolidation, we're going to look for a higher low to form compared to 2472 for this to be a tightening hourly pattern to be watching. So again, so many times, and we saw this in Canadian MJ names Friday, inability to break the high of the previous day 
is signal number one for profit taking for the bulls and for entering bearish for the bears. And you can see first thing, five minute attempt to break resistance. We fail. Next thing you know, in the next 20 minutes, it is a race for the exit as we pull back 10% in 20 minutes. And that's an example again of the volatility that this sector does have. Bulls are continuing to buy these dips. So it's very forgiving, you know, but this percentage movement in this sector is massive. When you can drop 10% in 20 minutes, and the next thing you know, two hours later, you bounce 9%. It's just a ton of volatility in both directions. So hourly equilibrium on watch for C-Web, unless the bulls can break 27.05 and 27.75 first thing on Monday. If we cannot, if we lose the hourly uptrend, we zoom out to the daily, we can see the long lower wicks of bulls buying the dip the past couple of days. 24.34 and 24.72 are the key daily support levels as we're looking to establish another daily higher low and try and continue this uptrend. After 27.75, we're going to look at psychological levels, 28, 29, and we'll see if the bulls can keep that up, but it's all about that resistance first thing. CL on the daily time frame, also very strong and a four-hour equilibrium to be watching. And actually, let's see if it's better on the hourly chart. So what I'm looking at here is the all-time high. Let's make sure that is the all-time high, and it is. Last weekly consolidation was all the way down at 1026, so we know we're overextended. 50% move with no weekly consolidation. So on the hourly time frame, the equilibrium, we have the all-time high, the low of the pullback, 1409, the inability to break resistance by 11 cents, or make that 9 cents, pullback, double bottom, so it's just a tightening range. 1520 and 1572 are the most important resistance levels for me. If we break 1520, that's a nice start to the week, but we'll still have to break 1572. Otherwise, it's just another lower high. And support levels are down at 1453 and then the double bottom at 1409. Very clearly, we would expect if 1409 double bottom breaks, that that's going to be a signal for bulls to take some profit and for potential weekly consolidation to begin if that level is lost. And the reason for that is a self-fulfilling prophecy to a certain degree. When you have a support level that is that clear with a double low, and you look at the next support below it, 1409, and then all the way down to 1333 and 1303. And again, what I pointed out, the 50% move after last weekly consolidation, all of these things line up so that if that support level is lost, we do have the potential that that's the catalyst for a bit more prolonged consolidation. But a nice hold of that support level on Friday, and we'll see if the range tightens or whether bulls can break that resistance on Monday. KHRN still watching the potential cup and handle. And if I look at this on the daily time frame, so for, for pattern setups where time is a factor, and I would look at this and say, well, that handle is too drawn out on the cup and handle pattern, and it's no longer fitting that pattern. Keep in mind that all these time frames are fractals of each other, and I can just change the time frame and make it look like a cup and handle pattern still by going to the two day chart. So this is why price levels are most important to me. But as far as patterns go, there's a lot of wiggle room and same thing for trend lines. You know, everybody's patterns and trend lines can look different. And someone might say, no, it's not a cup and handle pattern. But then if you look at it on the two day or three day chart, they might change their tune. So we have the high, the cup of the consolidation, the inability to break resistance, the healthy consolidation close up near the high on Friday. And here it is on the daily chart. We need a break of four psychological first thing this coming week. And we need a, to see the volume uptick here. We want to see more than one and a half million shares traded. The 20 day average volume is 1.4 million. So we want to see a break of $4 on over one and a half million shares traded to shift this momentum because bulls have been buying dips, but they haven't been making much progress breaking resistance. And it is absolutely worth watching for the potential of all time highs if we can get over some of these short term resistance levels. And again, I have a position at this point. It's a very small position. I will add to it if we do see the bulls head up towards these resistances because blue sky breakout is a fun place to be if you're a bull. GWPH also coming off of all time highs, but tightening up a little bit. We can see the high, low, lower high, higher low. So if we look at that on a daily time frame, the tightening range is the all time high and the low of the initial pullback. We did get a little bit of a bull break here with no follow through. And this is the same time period where we saw CGC with its little bull break with no follow through and a bit of a fake out. So I'm looking at this as our range right now with 177.37. 
our second most important resistance level. And the bulls just built a base of support this previous week down at 162.34. So I'm saying it's a high, low, let me draw it out because this is what stands out visually to me. High, low, lower, high, higher, low. And we're watching anything under 177.37 this coming week is going to be a lower high to stay in this range. And if that's what we get, then we'll have a real nice tightening equilibrium to be watching to the end of this week and potentially the following week needing to see that break. And again, we'll watch for the volume spike to be associated with that break when it does occur. But at this point, that resistance is about 4%, 4 5% away. So we're going to anticipate more likely than not, unless we see some increasing solid bull volume, we'll be looking for a lower high compared to 177.37. C-U-R-A has been coming off the all-time high. It's in a tightening range, daily inside bar right now. If we look at it on the four-hour time frame, we have the high, low, lower high is at 1283, and we're looking for a higher low compared to 1107. So a tightening equilibrium on watch, and if we break 1190 on Monday, we'll have to be watching that 1107 key support level, and if looking to play within this range, the very clear setup on a, on a play like this is entering on consolidation with 1107 being the stop and hoping that we stay in the equilibrium pattern to form that higher low and then make a move back up to look for the potential of a lower high but getting in closer to support as opposed to a break of a tightening pattern where you're getting in and there might not be some nearby support to establish a trade game plan based off of so i always prefer my entries to have clear support levels nearby that's where i base my stop levels around and if we do drop down towards that $11 area, C-U-R-A bulls will be watching for a potential entry. Look at the volume just completely disappear as we tighten up. So we'll be watching for a volume spike to indicate the tightening range is breaking when that does occur. H-A-R-V has also been very strong. We have to watch out for a head and shoulders pattern here. And just looking at it on the daily chart, it would look something like this with the left shoulder, the head. And if we see a bull move this coming week, and we already have declining bull volume, but if we cannot break 1377 and we form a lower high, the most important support level is 1180 because it would change from an uptrend of higher lows and higher highs to a lower high with the right shoulder and then a lower low if we break that neckline of 1180 support. So that is the must hold support level. And we have a little bit of bullish action to end the week, but certainly not very impressive at this point. We are going to need to see the bulls make their way back up towards 1377 resistance. Looking at it on the hourly chart, we have some hourly supports to be watching, but I like the daily for clarity. And if we cannot break 1377 in the first couple days this week and we lose the hourly uptrend, that will tell us our daily lower high has been set and we'll watch for the potential of that right shoulder. And again, just another name that has not consolidated on the weekly time frame since we made a 75% move. So on names like that, we know that weekly consolidation is likely coming sooner rather than later, and that weekly consolidation will be healthy to maintain overall uptrends. For all of these USMJ names, the most important thing for me is weekly uptrends that the bulls want to see maintained to keep that control in the midterm as we head into the spring and summer. So HARV coming off of a very strong move, but we do have to be watching out for the potential of a right shoulder forming on that daily time frame. That right shoulder will be negated if the bulls can see an increase in bull volume and a move back up towards 13 and 13.77 to shake off the potential of that right shoulder. PLTH, so this is a newer one to cover, and I like it because it's consolidated for months. And we saw the initial bull move of a, almost 100% move, and then we consolidated just almost sideways trading. After establishing our initial range of that consolidation, we had the high of 2.26%. The low of the pullback was 170, and we stayed within this range very nicely for months. So now we're heading up to this resistance, and what stands out to me? Volume. More than average volume. We can see once the bulls started to show up, look at the last two red weeks, and the total volume on those two weeks is about 1.8 million shares traded, and the bull volume in the last two weeks, we're looking at about 5 million. So very significant increase in volume. You can see it on the daily time frame. And another thing that I like here, is the fact that we are seeing consolidation before making the resistance break attempt. Because if we went straight from this move and saw a move from you know the 170s, that's a 25% move before we even break resistance. 
So if we're going to get that bull break, the bulls are already exhausting themselves just to even get to that resistance. So we don't look for a whole lot of follow through unless the bull volume continues to pour on. But my, pri my preference on this kind of setup would be much rather see a daily higher low established. Even this inside bar just slows things down. The hourly RSI, which was overbought as we headed to resistance, has cooled off significantly. And here's a scenario with lower high and lower low not leading to any bear follow through. Four hour time frame looks like very healthy consolidation. Ideal scenario for the bulls, continue to consolidate, whether it means further sideways or even a little bit of a pullback for a daily high or low in the low $2 range. Cool off the bulls, give them a breather, and then break that little double top, 222 and 226, because the resistance after those levels is very limited until the all-time high. We certainly wouldn't expect to go straight to all-time highs, but the next real clear resistance level is going to be in the mid to upper $2 range. So there's a potential of 10% with a lack of resistance after this. So it's worth keeping an eye on this play for the daily high or low and then that continuation move. And if we see this kind of bull volume, we certainly know the odds of breaking that resistance will be very high. CVSI, also in a tightening range. So looking at it on different time frames to try and find clarity. So I'd be looking just on the four hour here. We have the high of the bull move, the low of the pullback. And again, volatility is massive here. That kind of pullback, 16% in an extremely short amount of time. So the high, low, our lower high looks to be set at 610. And if we pull back, we have to hold 550 to maintain a higher low and maintain this tightening range. So 550 will be key support to be watching and resistance is 610 and 659. CVSI has a really nice looking, well, I take that back. The, pro the profit taking on Friday changed that weekly candlestick to give it a bit more of an upper wick. And look at that resistance, 654 and 659. So here's another scenario just going off of what I was just talking about. Look at the bull move that we saw to get to resistance. So that key resistance was 654. And we made a move of 46 to 50% just to get to that resistance level. The volume's there. Everything's great for the bulls. They're just overextended. They're too tired. It's like using up all of your energy to get to an obstacle, and then you don't have the energy to get far or even over that obstacle, and now we pull back. So this is the bulls reestablishing re themselves, taking a breather, and we want to see this tightening range break bullish for a more clear move over those resistance levels. So nice follow-up example on exactly what I was talking about. That was unintentional but certainly worked out. So we need to see this four hour equilibrium break bull to be heading back towards that little double top of resistance and try and make our way towards $7. And then 776 would be the most clear resistance level after that. TRUL earnings are approaching daily inside bar with a weaker close on Friday. So here's another move where we saw a support level established and we went straight up to break daily resistance, but we had made a 15% move in two days to get to that resistance. So we didn't get much follow through at all. And now we have to have this scenario where we're wondering, you know, is that a red flag? And we can it, take it both ways. We can say, no, it's not really red flag because we saw 15% in two days. The bulls were overextended. It's healthy consolidation. Or we could say, yes, it's a red flag. We were unable to get follow through straight into consolidation. But for me, it's all about the longer term trends. So I'm looking at the four hour time frame, and we have our high, low. It was a higher high. We did see a percent of follow through, but we need to maintain the four hour uptrend. So anything above 1605 is a higher low, but we want to see this new higher low established the sooner the better, because the sooner it's established, the more it's going to favor the bulls for potential continuation. Whereas if we drop down towards $17, then that four hour equilibrium becomes the most likely setup rather than the four hour continuation. So the bulls want to turn this momentum around early this coming week. But again, earnings is probably going to dictate how this setup ends up playing out. If we have a bearish reaction earnings, we're looking down at weekly support of 1497. And with a bullish reaction, we're going to be looking up at our recent top up at 2030. GTII setting up for a nice equilibrium as well. So I like the clarity of this pattern, but I wouldn't be looking to play it unless we're looking for that higher low. So again, a high, low, lower high and now we're looking for the higher low to form somewhere in the mid 19 dollar range on the pullback on the hourly we can see the shift in momentum at the end of the day on friday and it's all about 
the daily high or low. So the more we pull back here, that's when we can look to make a potential entry. Again, only if you're comfortable trading within equilibriums, where we would be looking for the higher low to form. The stop level would be 1825 because we know if that breaks, we lose the daily uptrend. That's our red flag. But if that level holds, we're looking for just a higher low to form in the mid to lower $19 range. And for this pattern to continue tightening up into the end of the week, depending on earnings. And also keep in mind that even the names that don't have earnings yet, but they are upcoming in the near term, they have the potential to react to these other individual names as well, because of course they're in the same sector and it might be a little bit of a glimpse and into what to anticipate for these other names as well. KSHB just made a bull break with a gap up open from a consolidation pattern. So the weekly chart looking to form its higher low inside bars, tightening ranges, and we did end with a bull break. So we're watching a weekly tightening pattern on KSHB here with the high low. Our lower high is 649. Higher low is now confidently established at 544. And now we're looking for a potential lower high compared to 649. If we break 649, it's a clear bull break. And really we can take it all the way back down here is when this pattern started. So low, high, higher, low, lower, high, higher, low, the tighter, the better. I'd love to see a rejection, an inability to break 649, a pullback and a higher low compared to 544 before we get a break sometime in May or June, ideal scenario. If however, we see increased bull volume with more than three and a half million shares traded this coming week, the potential that we could just see a bull break over 649 would increase. IIPR is giving us the signal that the all time high top is set for now. We had the high, low, lower high, and lower low. So again, looking at that on the four hour time frame, it's choppy and ugly. So we're going to move away from that. But just a very clear shift in momentum. And as soon as we broke 8.8262, that's pretty much the signal that we are done hitting all time highs for now. And that weekly consolidation was due. Over the last couple of weeks, we went from our weekly higher low to new all time highs of 38 to 40% move. Anything on the weekly above 66.55 is a higher low. The bulls have a lot of space to work with, and we're going to be looking for a new support level to be established in the upper 70s, I would say. Hourly RSI is oversold. Four-hour RSI is getting oversold. So if we start with a red day on Monday, we can look to potentially be scaling into oversold conditions, anticipating that a weekly higher low will likely form. That being said, the volume uptick on Friday would have me hesitate on that play a little bit and want to see how Monday plays out because another high volume red day like this, and we can anticipate that the pullback is going to take us potentially to the lower 70s as opposed to the upper 70s. So every little bit of information that we get can adjust the game plan in terms of what is the most likely scenario going forward, which is why, you know, as technical analysts, I'm always changing what my likely most scenarios are because I'm always getting new information. And to think that you need to make a call and stick to that call is just not the right way to be playing this game, in my opinion, because you box yourself in. So it's, it's absolutely fine as traders to be changing our minds all the time because we need to be agile to be able to pivot and react to information that we're getting, you know, six hours plus of new information every single day. And we can utilize that and we should, we shouldn't, you know, stick to our, our guns. And unless you have a game plan that's, it's following through like that, don't be afraid to shift in terms of what you feel is the most likely scenario. Now, as far as, you know, shifting and, and moving your game plan to say, well, I can have an extra 10% loss on this position because it's heading down to the level that you would have otherwise stopped out in. That's a bit of a different scenario. That's letting your emotions come into play. But if you're getting clues as far as indicators go, that's when you can shift your most likely scenario. So even just this example, Friday alone, you take away Friday, very healthy consolidation and no red flags whatsoever. So looking for the potential of just a daily higher low and then continuation. But as soon as that uptick in bear volume occurs and we break support of 62 or make that 82.62 to a lower low, as soon as that happens, you can shift your game plan a little bit and say, okay, maybe this consolidation is going to take us a bit further. So that's going to have me be a bit patient. So long story short, after all that, I would say changing your entry game plan as opposed to changing your exit game plan is the safer way to be utilizing the constant new information that we're getting. IAN tightening up 
favoring the bears because we're much closer to support than resistance, but earnings is going to dictate, in my opinion, whether we break this support level and head down to the daily higher low of 716, or whether we see a bull reaction and head up to the recent high of 820. If we get a bear reaction on the weekly time frame, the most important support will be 651 to maintain the weekly uptrend, and with a bull reaction, we'll be looking back up at the recent high of 820. So going to be watching those in those earnings very closely. MedMen bear break. We had the double top. That was the bear signal as far as taking some profit or bears jumping in. And we had our four hour tightening pattern that broke bearish. So high, low of the pullback, broke it bearish right away. Not a ton of follow through. And then we get the, the follow through on Friday. So we're in a four hour lower high, lower low pattern. The daily time frame is worth watching for a potential entry just because the RSI level on the hourly is getting extended to the downside. But keep in mind, I am not interested in MedMen right now because we have not changed the trend. We broke the lower highs, so that gets me interested. That says, okay, I see you MedMen bulls. I'm gonna start watching you now. But to confirm the weekly trend change, we need the higher low and then continuation move. So what we have to see is a higher low compared to 355 and then a bull break of 469 to confirm the weekly trend has changed. So until that happens, I am not interested because we are still in a weekly downtrend. The bulls just are not proving themselves on the longer term weekly chart at this point. So 355 is that must hold level. I can see a scenario where I would be interested entering into weakness if we were to drop down, let's say 380s, 370s, get that four hour and hourly RSI oversold. Then we'd be looking to make a play off of 355 support for those bulls to attempt a higher low. But again, the uptick in volume for the bears on Friday has me take a step back, be patient, and I probably am going to be waiting for a weekly shift in momentum before looking for any kind of entry in MedMen. ACRG. So this is one that is also trying to change momentum, but I like it better for the weekly equilibrium that's been forming since inception. All-time high, all-time low, lower high, higher low, and now it looks like our lower high might be set at 23.20. If we break the low of this week, first thing this coming week, then we're going to be looking for that lower high to be set and the bulls will have to form a higher low compared to 16.01. This is one that I write down on a piece of paper and I say weekly equilibrium and I check on it every couple of days, but doesn't look like this weekly equilibrium is going to break until late April or May. And it's one to be watching because if it breaks bullish, it's going to be a real nice pattern. But other than that, I am not interested in ACRG. So there's our key weekly support, 1601. Another scenario where if we were to drop down very quickly, down towards $18, see the four hour and the hourly RSI get oversold, then it might be a scenario where I would look for an entry to play off that 1601 support. But I am more confident that support levels are going to hold the more overextended we are to the downside. Just like the bulls tire themselves out when running into resistance, the bears do as well. So if we have oversold conditions on the four hour, the hourly, the 15 minute, and support is approaching, then we're looking for the odds of those support levels to hold and stay in this tightening pattern to be pretty high. So if we meander on down with you know lower highs, lower lows, cooling off RSI levels, I probably won't be looking for an entry, but if we dump down rapidly towards the $18 range, that's a different story. GGB, still very weak, still keeping an eye on it, but not seeing a shift in momentum that I want to see. And just the fact alone that we've seen two months of consolidation with no real bull follow through, this right here is your red flag. Healthy consolidation, bulls try and shift that momentum, upper wick and close at the low, upper wick and close near the low. That's clear bear action overriding the bull attempt to shift that momentum. So that's enough to say patient because we are not shifting momentum and the bulls are not proving anything and it's worth keeping an eye on, but not interested in GGB at this point due to the continued weakness. MRMD, also watching for a shift in momentum on the weekly time frame, but this is one that's actually a monthly equilibrium that stands out to me. So this is one, to, again, to write down, but probably not gonna play this for a couple months if I ever do. High, low, lower high, and we're looking for the monthly higher low to form compared to 235. So heading down towards that 235 level, we can see there's no major red flags for the bulls. The daily chart is trying to build a base of support here in the 330s, but we haven't seen any kind of follow through. We'd have to see the bulls break 364 as bull signal number one that momentum is shifting, but 
No sign that that monthly high or low has been established just yet. And last, we'll wrap it up with NBEV because NBEV has been struggling in a big way. These higher opens, look at these just clear gap up opens for profit taking. How many times have we seen this in the last two weeks? One, two, three times higher open with selling pressure. And this is another monthly equilibrium to be watching. So MRMD and NBEV monthly equilibriums. High, low, lower high, and we're looking for the higher low compared to 303, and there's tons of space there where we could continue pulling back before that is found, so want to be patient. So to wrap it up, NBEV and MRMD, monthly equilibriums on watch. GGB, longer term on watch, but still all bears. ACRG, weekly equilibrium on watch. So there's our three longer term equilibrium plays to be watching. No immediate plays nearby, but those are going to be plays in potentially late April, May, June, sometime in the summer. We have our strong names near Blue Sky Breakouts. We have our earnings to be watching coming up, and we will take it from there. I will see you all on Monday, and we'll see which names we're going to cover. That's going to be a lot of fun. Have a good weekend. Have a good Sunday. I'm done. So Adventure Time, we've got Natural Bridges National Monument now. Pretty similar to Arches, but just a little bit different. And there's a nice little valley with trails and paths to walk through. So another very picturesque spot with some very cool rock formations. And I actually ended up getting lost for the first time. I never really got lost. Definitely went the wrong way and had to backtrack sometimes, but I got lost, completely lost the trail here. And it was, well, these bugs are really cool. They're pretty much a mix between a giant moth and a hummingbird. And I, I couldn't figure out, is that a hummingbird or what is going on there? And I forget their specific name, but it is something that alludes to their similarity. But they were having a blast on these yellow flowers, getting their pollen and nectar. But ended up getting lost on this trail and stuck in a valley, essentially, in a canyon. So I had to scale the walls of the canyon to just get to the top and to be able to see things. And then ended up, I mean, by the time I had to go six miles out of the way and it was dusk, it wasn't the kind of thing where I was, you know, fearing for my life. I pretty much knew worst case scenario, I'm going to be hungry and I'm going to have to sleep exposed out, you know, in the open and deal with it tomorrow. But fortunately found my way out and ended my way back to the tent, exhausted, pretty much hiked twice as long as I was anticipating, but it was a good learning experience. So a really nice canyon walk, natural bridge. You can see where the name comes from. This is in Utah as well, Gooseneck State Park. Incredible river that, you know, obviously has cut this path and just winds back and forth. And to just see time eroded like this, very cool. Another place where you want to time it right because I got there too early and was dripping sweat, completely exposed, waiting for dusk. But another spot where you just put your tent right there. There's nobody else around. Maybe there was one other RV that was sitting up there. Not a ton to do, but if you can keep yourself entertained with a book or with some music or with some ganja, it's a pretty good spot. But a really interesting geological formation. That's how I entertain myself. A little bit of modern art, leaving my mark. And that's that. So after Capitol Reef was heading down, where did we go next? I think that's we're coming close to the end of this trip. And then we'll see what, what am I going to talk about at the end of videos. We'll find something. So have a good Friday night. We'll be back tomorrow with USMJ eventually. Going to go to Smoky Mountain National Park again on the way home, which is actually where this road trip chapter one started. So all full circle. See you then.